good morning friends welcome to sharachandra ias academy daily current affair analysis for the date of 5th may 2022 the topics of the day first topic is about the monetary policy committee second topic is about the local body elections delay in local body elections third topic is about state human rights commission fourth topic is about crr cash reserve ratio versus slr statutory liquidity ratio fifth topic is about ukraine okay so the first topic which is monetary policy committee the context is recently rbi has increased the repo rates so in the monetary policy committee meeting okay so rbi recently increases the repo rates so increases the repo rates in in the meeting of monetary policy committee so if you see what is this monetary policy committee and what is its link with rbi so monetary policy committee is basically or uh, its function is to uh, deal with repo rates uh, reverse repo rate bank rate and crr so monetary policy committee is the one which decides the rates of the rbi rbi uh, through this monetary policy committee will decide the repo rates reverse repo rate bank rate and cash reserve ratio okay next if you see the central government has established monetary policy committee under rbi act section 45 zb okay which was uh, devised in 1934 now what are the basic functions the basic functions are very simple that is it will decide okay the it will determine the all the repo rates reverse repo rates or liquidity adjustment facility right so if you see the composition the composition is monetary policy committee consists of six members okay there will be no government official it is headed by rbi rbi is ex officio uh, rbi governor is the ex officio chairperson okay so so in charge of the uh, uh, monetary policy committee is rbi's deputy governor as well as an executive director of the central bank okay how the selection and the terms of office will be the government's nominations to mpc will be chosen by the search cum selection committee chaired by the cabinet secretary okay so there is a committee which is called as search cum selection committee it is headed by cabinet secretary so this committee under the chairmanship of cabinet secretary will search and select three members and with the rbi governor economic affairs secretary as always the members okay three specialists in economics banking and finance or monetary policy also the members of this committee so four year term and not eligible for reappointment okay the term of these members is four years okay the decisions are made by the majority vote each person will enjoy one vote okay so the chairman as i said is the governor of rbi the governor of the rbi on the other hand will not have any veto authority over the other members but will have casting vote in the event of tie okay in the event of tie he can go for the casting vote okay then what is the monetary policy of rbi if you see what is this monetary policy it is relating to the monetary resources under its control it is very simple so you, these rates whether it is repo rate reverse repo rate or slr clr all these crr all these decides the flow of money in the country okay if you want to understand how this affects the flow of money in the country if uh, if this is a bank imagine this is a bank the repo rate and the reverse repo rate okay the repo rate and reverse repo rate will affect and at the same time crr also crr also will affect the amount of loans dispersed to the society okay the amount of loans available to the society the chances of the society taking more loans depends upon these slr crr reverse repo rate and repo rate that's the reason why basing upon the monetary policy that is basing upon the decisions of the monetary policy committee the flow the liquid flow the money flow in the society can be affected okay the money flow can be affected in the society so this is a very important policy very important policy decision by the monetary policy committee headed by the rbi governor 
the goal of it is to stabilize the prices for the better growth and equity equity means equal distribution of the resources social justice fostering the establishment of new financial companies okay according to the chakravarti committee's recommendations okay so at the same time we are trying to increase our country's gdp rate and it is okay both see if any country in there is gdp growth okay if in a country there is a gdp growth it is definitely associated with the inflation it is definitely associated with inflation it is it is highly impossible for any country to show the gdp growth to have the gdp growth without the in growth of inflation that's the reason why as far as possible we are des- gdp growth is desirable but at the same time inflation growth is not desirable that's the reason why rbi is working oh, through its monetary policy to control the inflation at the manageable levels okay inflation below like uh, 5% below 5% is okay permissible like 1% 2% 3% is permissible but if it is above 5% like 6% 7% then it has to be controlled okay what is inflation inflation is a state in the country where the prices are at in rising okay the the state of the economy where the prices are increasing is inflation next so monetary policy committee calculates the appropriate policy interest rate okay policy interest rate to help meet the country's inflation target right what are the different types of instruments and how they are managed there are two types majorly qualitative and quantitative okay so qualitative comes sorry first we will see qualitative direct action change in the margin money or moral suasion or the examples of qualitative instruments whereas quantitative here it is uh, quantitative frequently you will see in the news so having idea on the definitions of all these quantitative instruments is very important for prelims point of view you must have the idea of all the definitions of these quantitative terms and at the same time you must have idea of how these quantitative instruments will affect the money flow in the market okay open market operations bank rate repo rate reverse repo rate cash reserve ratio slr statutory liquidity ratio marginal standing facility liquidity adjustment facility all these come does comes under the quantitative instruments okay so please get the complete idea of the definitions of these quantitative instruments for prelims as well as how they are going to affect the money flow in the uh, in the ma- uh, society okay okay so in this article in this today's news we will detailedly discuss about cash reserve ratio and statutory liquidity ratio liquidity ratio okay in the upcoming news we are going to discuss about crr and slr next so now itself we will discuss the clr and ssr we'll come back to the second news again yeah so the fourth topic for the day is crr versus slr so once we completed the fourth topic we will again come to the second and third topic okay see if you see rbi has recently increased the repo rate in the morning so in this context let us see what is crr and slr first what is crr crr is a cash reserve ratio see it is very simple the purpose of both the crr and slr are same but the difference is very simple crr is the money kept by the commercial bank at rbi okay here the money is kept at rbi by the commercial bank slr is the same the ratio of some money some depo- ratio the some ratio of its deposits has to be kept in the itself okay it shall not give this particular amount as loans okay it has to keep itself okay so the purpose of both is same that is crr and slr to control the banks de- i mean some part of the bank deposits has to be controlled not to be dispersed as loans but however crr is kept with rbi slr is kept by the bank itself if you see crr in the money market tool is used by the rbi to control the flow of funds into the market if cash reserve ratio is increasing then the flow of funds into the market decreases 
for that matter both are same if whether it is crr or slr if they increase the cash flow into the market decreases okay cash reserve ratio is the proportion of total deposits that rbi directs the commercial banks to retain as a reserve with rbi that means the commercial banks shall keep some percentage of the total deposits with rbi okay with rbi one of the most most crucial tool is this okay in controlling the money flow so if uh, crr is high bank deposits with rbi rises therefore the bank's ability to give the loans reduces okay right next so it will it will be used to control the inflation why because if the amount to be dispersed by the bank is low the amount of money in the market decreases which helps in controlling the inflation this is how crr is used to control the inflation similarly the percentage of crr ratio if the similar okay if it decreases then bank deposits at rbi also decrease so the amount available with the banks to give loans increases okay so borrowing can be cheaper flow of money increases right so more more liquidity will be present in the market however the side effect is inflation also rises as a result crr might be considered as a very successful weapon by the rbi to keep the inflation under control okay here was a example let us say bank has 100 rupees of deposits and crr percent is 4% imagine a situation now 4 rupees will be given to rbi 4 rupees has to be given to rbi rest of the 96 rupees can be given as loans given as loans now rbi for example crr has increased to 5% then 5 rupees has to be kept with rbi only 95 rupees are available for loans that means if rbi here in given example crr has been raised so if crr is raised money available in the market decreases so which will control the inflation next what is slr both slr and clr both are almost same but the only difference is in a crr money has to be kept with rbi whereas in slr money has to be kept by with itself <coughs> so it is also to control the flow of money in the market slr is kept not in the monetary form but also in case of uh, in form of cash or gold or other rbi other securities so goal is to have some in liquid assets that can be used to deal with the sudden surge in the demand for the amount from the depositor for example if there is a bank is there if there is a bank if there is a bank if there is sudden increase in the demand deposits that means the depositors are demanding the money okay sudden increasing or at the same time there is some other uh, reason whatever may be the reason the more number of deposits are being demanded then this uh, bank will reach satisfy at least satisfy the demands of the customers by using slr okay by using slr also and also crr both okay so the goal is to meet the sudden increase in the demand it is utilized with the rbi to limit the credit facilities granted by the banks to the bar borrowers okay slr is defined as a percentage of banks net time and demand liabilities time liability means fixed deposits demand liability means temporary deposits on demand deposits okay demand deposit can be drawn at any time whereas fixed deposits or time deposits can be drawn only after the expiry of the uh, term only only after the expiry of term so we define net time as the amount payable to the consumer after an interval demand liability when he requests it whereas uh, time we have uh, fixed deposit so we have 5 years or 10 years of time in order to pay that slr also protects the bank from bank run or and give customers trust in the banking system so okay so in case of bankruptcy or in case of any other uh, loss to the bank occurs then the bank is unable to pay its depositors then slr will be helpful okay for example if 100 rupees is the total deposits in a bank if slr is 20% always the 20% has to be kept with the bank only 80 rupees have to be available for the lending so if you add crr and slr together crr and slr together there say suppose crr is 5% and uh, slr is 20% so this 5% has to be and 
if 100 rupees is the deposit 5% has to be given to the RBI 20% have to be kept with it itself so totally 25% is uh, kept with either RBI or and banks so together so only 75% are available for the loans next okay so this is all about CRR and SLR as it is linked with the monetary policy that I discussed it in, in uh, now itself so let us go for the second news the second topic of the day is issue of the delay in local body elections so if you see in west bengal there is a lot of delay in local body elections okay so it directed supreme court directed the state election commission to notify the elections within two weeks after okay it is the responsibility of the state election commission to conduct the local body elections that is the both panchayat level as well as at the municipality levels despite so, so constitution has been revised uh, so local self bodies for example through the 73rd and 74th constitution amendment act these local bodies have been uniform uh, made uniform throughout the country and as in many states they are three tier government and self contained okay so through the devolution of powers and decentralization of democracy we have established the third tier to our total government okay third tier that is local government central government state government local government these are the three tiers of indian government okay now however another aspect of these local councils operate is that manner in which their delegates are elected frequently with controversy okay for with controversy so next local elections are frequently so they involve violence or acquisition of arbitrary what delimitation or reservation so so many times they have been accu I mean, accused that uh, arbitrarily ward has been delimited and reservations have to be utilized uh, i mean are utilized arbitrarily so uh, what is the function of state election commission in this case it is tasked to hold the free and free impar impartial election free fair impartial elections in case of local governments okay do remember that the parliament elections are conducted by election commission of india state assembly elections are also conducted by election commission of india state election commission has nothing to do with state assembly state election commission has responsibility only to conduct the local elections local government elections okay this is established under 73rd and 74th constitution amendment acts to introduce which introduced the panchayat and municipalities okay 11th and 12th schedules were also introduced so the government appoints so and so person the governor will also establish his service conditions and length of the office if suppose so the state election commissioners uh, are appointed by the governor okay are appointed by the governor and the governor will also establish his service conditions and length of the office state election commissioner will be removed from his position in the same way as the same grounds of high court judge okay what are the grounds of high court judge misconduct or violation of the constitution and all next on the recommendation of parliament the president can remove the high court judge from the office similarly sec also on the recommendation of parliament the president can remove the state election commissioner so 243 k1 states that the state election commission consisting of commissioner appointed by the governor so he will supervise he will direct and he will control the electoral rolls and conduct of all elections to the panchayats and 243k2 class 2 states that the tenure and appointment will, will be decided by the state assembly elect uh, legislation okay so he not may be he mean he may not be dismissed except in the same manner and the same grounds of high court judge okay so in order to make it an independent body and impartial body they were given secure uh, they were given the security of the tenure same as of high court judge then yes so what about the independence and autonomy of the state election commissioner because they should not come under the influence of the state government the degree first of all so it is independent because it has a great responsibility of conducting the free and fair elections on it but in us most governments choose the top bureaucrats among their favorites for this position so select state election commissioner 
or uh, commissions are regularly accused of being the political routine tasks like ward delimitation routine special wards for women and scs setting up election dates became the with controversy they it became the topic of controversy as a result the opposition believes the exercise of being carried out in the interest of ruling party okay so opposition parties are blaming the state election commissions that they more became when they are working only at the interest of ruling party even if this cannot be generalized to all states and all persons in the positions it is obvious that ccs do not appear to enjoy same level of confidence as that of the election commission of india we know that the election commission of india enjoys great credibility in india in india for performing the free and fair elections but however state election commissions do not appear to enjoy the same level of confidence from the political parties and the public as that of election commission of india okay in terms of their independence what is the supreme court decision supreme court decision is fully independent okay that is a state election commission has to be fully independent of the state government and also goa government's request it is called for the goa government's request for law secretary to take an additional responsibility of scc that is a mockery of the constitutional mandate next court has urged all the scs who are under the direct authority of individual state governments to resign by utilizing the extraordinary vote now court has urged all the state election commissions who are working under the state government to resign under article 142 most states in practice appoint the retired bureaucrats like retired ias officer or ibs officers to serve the acc okay so impact on the persons who are no longer employed by the state governments however okay it remains to be seen supreme court says that generally retired persons have to be employed because the state government's influence is not much on the retired person however it is evident that these administrations will have to find a mean to pick only those who are truly independent not in any way beholden to them so as far as possible state election commissioners have to be appointed seeing that he is completely independent of the government influence and see that state election commission works for free fair elections in the case of local self government as you all know that the, there are many news uh, as proof for the mal practices in the state elections I and mean, local elections conducted by sec next state human rights commission is the third topic of the day so the A report has been submitted recently by the Pune Rural Police to the State Human Rights Commission of Maharashtra stating that no evidence has been found against the Hindutva leader Shambhaji Bide and that he has removed from the he has been removed from the Koregao Bhima violence case okay in Koregao Bhima violence case okay it is a violence between the SCs I mean on one hand the weaker sections on the one hand and okay so Koregao Bima violence case in this person that is Shambhaji Bide has been removed now because Pune Rural Police submitted evidence showing that he has no link with that okay if you see about SHRC SHRC looks into the human rights violations okay so so the report has been given to the state human rights commission so if you see what is state human rights commission so state human rights commission is responsible for protecting for human right uh, for protecting the human rights of the general public in a state and at the same time it also take actions against those who violates the human rights okay so shrc looks into the human rights violations in the areas mentioned in the state list and concurrent list if the nhrc and another statutory commission already looked into it SHRC will not so if NHRC and any other statutory commission takes action into that particular incident SHRC will not uh, come into the picture the objectives are same as that of NHRC that is protection of human rights for the citizens it consists of chairperson and two members 1 plus 2 chairperson and two members it is chairperson is a retired chief justice of any high court at least member should be either sitting or retired high court judges with 7 years of experience at least okay so it must be a person with expert in case of in the field of human rights has to be there so these are the three chairperson has to be retired uh, chief justice of high court 
two other persons have to be retired or serving high court judges with seven years experience other has to be an expert in the an expert in the fields of human rights so the governor will appoint the chairperson and other members of hhrc based upon the recommendations of the committee okay so this committee will recommend who has to be appointed as the state human rights commission chairman so the committee consists of prime prime minister okay okay so the powers of human rights commission is the commission has the same authority as that of a civil court okay so the same as the civil court and here the cases which are filed within one year okay generally what are the powers of a civil court civil court can summon any person civil court can summon uh, can receive any information from any uh, office of uh, government in the state and it can summon any officer any private person so it can get the means listen to the witnesses okay the all these powers come under the powers of civil court now it has a power to recommend the victim restitution and prosecution of the accused okay however such suggestions are not legally binding this point has to be noted very very important why because the state human right commission does not have a power to give the judgment which is legally binding okay but however it is morally binding okay the decisions of the uh, shrc human right commission and its recommendations are very important in fighting the cases in high courts and uh, supreme courts whatever okay so it sends special and handover report to the state legislature detailing the whatever the actions taken in the response of the recommendations okay so the state election, uh, shrc will give the recommendations now it is a duty of the state legislature to proceed with them to act to act upon those recommendations if they deviate from the recommendations then they have to give the explanations and reasons okay for refusing to accept the advice okay that is the power enjoyed by the state human rights commission next coming to the fifth uh, topic of the day places in news ukraine so you know we all know that the ukraine and russia are at war and there was a lot of violence is being taken in the cities of ukraine so if you see from the prelims point of view uh, instead of asking the question directly they may ask you some geographical features of the ukraine so that's the reason why this topic has been included so it is a east european country belarus uh, so the if the, you have belarus to the north russia to the east Sea of Azov and Black Sea to the south, Moldova and Romania, uh, Romania to the southwest. Okay, so these are the boundaries of the Ukraine. Next to the west, you have to the west side you have sorry uh, to the west side you have Ang Hungary, Slovakia and Poland. So Kiev, the country capital is Kiev, is situated on Dnieper River. Do you remember that the Dnieper River? Okay, the country's capital Kiev is situated on Dnieper River. So this Dnieper Nister, South Bu, Siversky Donates are major rivers of the Ukraine. Then the majority of the Ukraine's rivers run into the Black Sea. As we all see, the Sea of Azov and Black Sea are to the south of Moldova, south of the country. So at the south of the country, that is part of Mediterranean Sea. So most of majority of the rivers flow into the Black Sea or Azov Sea. Both are part of the Mediterranean Basin. Okay. Kyiv, Kharkiv, Odessa, Donbas, Mykolaiv, Mariupol, Semveropol and other are the important cities present in the Ukraine. So, so uh, my dear friends, as far as possible, try to concentrate upon the geography of the Ukraine because the questions may be uh, not directly asked about the Ukraine. Instead, they will ask about the geography. For example, in the last time also, when China attacked the, uh, when the China occupied the place in the uh, uh, region means uh, Kashmir Valley, Ladakh Valley, uh, Ladakh region. There also they ask the geography based question in the prelims. So similarly, you can expect a geography based uh, question in uh, about the Ukraine in prelims. Okay, so please do concentrate about that. Thank you, friends. That's all for today.